Regional Council support the recommendation and direct staff to continue uh, this work. The next steps would be for us to provide detailed recommendations for establishing an actual office incentive program that, that you that use uh, use the TEGS. And this would include developing a framework, a project criteria uh, for enabling participation, and the implementation mechanism, uh, documentation, and all that. Of course, um, if, uh, if directed to do that, we would continue to work uh, very carefully and closely with our local municipal partners to develop a program uh, that, can, that can reflect the, the variety of local contexts that we'd be responding to. And last slide, next slide, please. So thank you very much for the opportunity to, uh, to present on this report today and look forward to any questions. Thank you. Thank you. My list is Kovac, Crombie, Demerla. Councillor Kovac. Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Adrian, just want to thank you for your report and the time. I would imagine that yourself and members of the team in planning would have uh, invested in, in preparing this for council. Uh, going back to February when all council supported uh, my and Councillor Medeiros' motion. Uh, and I know we all have our local CIPs. The thought was something backed by the region could be very helpful and making those local CIPs that much more attractive and effective for, you know, would be potential office and employment developers. I will say that, that I was not disappointed by the report, despite the fact you're recommending against it, because I think with the Teague that as a CFO Van Offwagen has spoken to as well as yourself, uh, could have a lot of promise. So I guess that's where I would ask a few questions on, on that further. I know that, City of Toronto has implemented both a, I don't know if they still have, a DC exemption for office development or employment, as well as um, as a TEAG. I don't know if it's set up in different areas, if it's like North York, Scarborough, or where, wherever. But, you know, it's basically needed in parts of Brampton. We need it in, in the Saugus Down, or um, I'm sure Caledon is, you know, thinking as well. I don't know if that would implement or whatever. But with most... Uh, TEAG programs, it seems that they're spread out over a number of years. I don't know if that's like 10 or something like that. How could you see this potentially uh, unfolding? With, you know, would it be with, with the clause? It would be capped, like a sunset clause. But would it be capped maybe at 10 years? Would it be, and then would it be front-loaded? Would it be back-loaded? What would the scale look like? So uh, through you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the question. So those are all the things, um, you know, we've, we've completed this feasibility analysis to, to look at um, how the region could best, best participate and what mechanisms and, and brought forward the recommendations today. Those kinds of questions are exactly the ones that we would, that we would if, if the if council supports our recommendation today, that, that we would get into. But, but as you say, um, it, it would be uh, uh, a, a system where the, um, the, the property tax increment that, that would be uh, result from the new development of the office would be would not be uh, be implemented right away, but would be implemented over over a time time period in the order of about ten years. I think typically is what's uh, what's done. Some of them uh, gradually increase the the taxes that will be applicable over the ten years. Others are more more backloaded. Um, those are the kinds of things that 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 we would we would work with our local municipal, particularly the economic development staff, in terms of what what makes the most sense. And also want to consult with the industry in terms of what can be the most effective at at actually um, delivering. Uh, although. You know, minimizing the uh, the the ultimate cost at the end of the day, but and uh, yeah, I think that answers your question. Uh, thank you for that, the other question, I guess you'll figure that out. Would be you know what sort of grant percentage would it look like? But that I guess you'll come back and, and let us know. Um, finally, what will the timing look like? Uh, you think maybe by? I mean, I don't want to put data in your in your head. I know you know there's a lot on your plate, but. So, so through you, Mr. Chairman, one one of the um, uh, uh, ad advantages of, of the approach and, and you know taking a look at the feasibility of this that 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 we did identify is that because there wouldn't be a need for you know a, uh, a mechanism such as a a new official plan policy or developing a, a comprehensive uh, C CIP and the uh, the the process under the Planning Act that would be required with that because we're not we're not uh, recommending any of that we'd be able to operate uh, uh, through the 
uh, at this point, I guess, the, the local uh, CIPs that exist and any other ones that might be com coming down the road, it, this is something that could be turned around very quickly. Um, it would be a matter of, of, of getting getting to the work of designing the program, um, consulting with others on, on how that how that would work, put, putting together the documentation and bringing that back to council. I would think that, um, you know, uh, we could we could do that uh, over the fall and be, be back to council with a with a complete uh, package ready ready to go, uh, uh, you know, by January, that kind of a time frame. That's great. Thank you very much for that. And I guess I'll just say that I'm, I'm supportive then uh, of the recommendation of, of one with that type of office incentive program through uh, tax incremental equivalent uh, rent system. So that, that looks really good. I'll leave it to somebody else. I'm sure somebody else is going to want to speak to um, how you see kind of the effects of COVID, you know, if we're going to some kind of new world normal or whatever. Um, and and it, it's, it's sustainable in that sense. We're going to see greater spread and not so much of a concentration of a concentration within major cities. You know, if people, more people and more sectors can work from home, then you might not have to leave Thunderbay and move to the big city in Toronto to get a job. Maybe you can stay in place. Um, just as an example, uh, I'll leave that to somebody else to ask. Thank you again for the report. Thank you, Mayor Crombie. Thank you, and thank you, Councillor Kovac. Uh, I too am very supportive of uh, the region supporting our local CIPs. I think we all know that somebody's breathing heavy, by the way. Um, so please mute yourself. But we all know that downtown Toronto would not have been built with all kinds of incentives. And we do have to incentivize the building of office towers and office employment in our downtowns, or it'll go elsewhere. So I'm a little bit confused about the recommendation, which I'd like to move, um, because it says that the region... CIP not be established with a feasibility assessment described in the report. I read the report with great interest. Barry Lyons is always very thoughtful. Um, and, but that the region support local municipal office employment through contributing to TEAGS um, and, that they, and that the staff report back. So are we going forward with TEAGS, supporting local TEAGS at the region or not? Because um, we certainly have a lot of interest in our downtown. But would need the city would need the support of the region with respect to a, a, a joint uh, a joint a joint CIP program. And uh, for my councillors, there was a memo sent out. I think it wasn't till late last night that Diana circulated it from Andrew Whittemore. If you all take a look, so this is very important for incentivizing um, the building of office commercial. I don't know if, you know, obviously this year is not the right time given COVID impact, but it's something we need to look closely at and maybe launch next year. So where are we at with this? Could you please, um, Andrew or Adrian or whoever, or Stephen, whoever's authored this, please explain uh, the, 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 the recommendation to me is a little bit unclear. Uh, through, through you, Mr. Chairman, and, and thank you for the question, Madam Mayor. Um, because the original um, uh, direction from Council was to explore the feasibility of a regional CIP, we structured the recommendation to say, no, that's not something that we're recommending. However, it, it is uh, it is absolutely recommending that we do participate uh, through the local CIP process and that we do pursue a financial incentive through through Teagues through 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 that mechanism. So it, it's uh, negative in terms of the regional CIP, positive in terms of proceeding uh, and participating through the, the, the local municipal CIPs and proceeding with with Teagues. And basically, um, uh, should should this uh, uh, recommendation be supported, we'd be going back and doing the work to actually design the program and, and bring that back for for. Uh, uh, back to council to uh, to proceed with. But isn't T aren't Teagues just one of the tools used in a CIP? So why would you say you're not supporting? You're not going to have a regional CIP when you are going to support local Teagues. Um, yes, Teagues are are a uh, uh, are, are one mechanism, and we are we're specifically in this recommendation specifically uh, seeking direction to pursue Teagues and implementing them through the a local CIP. Not to say that we we wouldn't um, you know work work with local municipalities on all aspects of their of their CIPs, but here we're specifically recommending that as a financial incentives that the region do do pursue Teagues, and that the mechanism through which we would we would um, provide that is 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 through the local CIP. Right. So, Adrian, explain to all of us how that would look if there was also a regional CIP that supported Teagues. What's the difference? So, uh, uh, 
through, Mr. Chair. So the, the difference would be that the region would would have to go through um, the, the 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 planning process in terms of um, um, establishing a, uh, a a CIP, which would which would which would which would take time, and um, we would probably be be applying a uh, a very um, uh, uh, I guess one size fits all kind of a, a regional approach to to the to the CIP, and as I mentioned in the in the presentation, there are a whole series of of different factors that apply differently in different locations and different aspects of the of the of the office market, and what. Um, what the what the consultant found and, and and suggested is that that those things are very nuanced, and that uh, at the local level and the different CIPs more more nimble and able to be be specifically responsive to, to some of that through the, through the local CIPs rather than more generic regional one, and that um, the, the most efficient way to to deliver on on the. Um, the, the tax increment equivalent grant would be to, to use the mechanism that that exists or that's uh, that's contemplated in other areas and, and and just deliver it straight through that rather than have another layer um, that perhaps isn't as uh, as nimble and, and 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 responsive as the local CIP. So it adds another and unnecessary layer and uh, and isn't as nimble essentially. I, mean, I'm, I hear you. I'm just looking at the R staff report on this item. Um, it's, the report doesn't enable a region to participate in local CIPs, does it? So I think that, I think my staff, what they're getting at here is that they feel that there needs to be a combined local and regional CIP in place to um, facilitate the Teague program to provide the necessary incentive to incentivize the construction of office. Mayor Crombie, Marshall, Mayor Crombie yes. perhaps if I through the chair could help, I, I think we're all on the same page. I think what we're really saying is we, we want you folks at the local level to drive the bus and we're going to play a strong supporting role, but you have all the local knowledge, you know where it belongs, and I think okay. we're saying we, we like that you delineate how and what and the region wants to play a strong supporting role, but but we both don't need to be driving the buses. We think we want to take the guidance from the municipal. And, and can I ask somebody again to mute or because we're getting a, a lot of background noise as well, but the intention Adrian, please correct me if I'm wrong. We really want the locals to drive the bus, and we want to play a strong supporting role at the regional level because you have that local knowledge that's so vital I in guiding that, us. To I, well, my question is about the tax supports. Would there be regional tax support for that Teague as well? And, and I think it, it becomes a grant, right? You would grant back to the yeah. developer. So yeah. there would be a municipal grant. Would there be a regional grant tax grant with back and, to the developer as well? Adrian, three, Mr. Chair, absolutely. That's the that's the intent that we would we would apply the regional uh, Teague. And just use the, the local CIP as sort of the implementing mechanism, but the 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 the, uh, the 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 tax grant would apply to the regional regional taxes as well. Absolutely. Okay, I'm happy to move the report. I know that Councillor Kovac was in favor, so perhaps he wants a second. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Councillor Demerla. Oh, uh, thank you, Chair. And I uh, I want to say that uh, I support the idea instead of the, the region creating another layer, another CIP to just support the municipalities. That just makes perfect sense to me, and I'm supportive of that. What I did want to ask Adrian was, would there be, uh, as you come forward with more detail in the fall, some flexibility? Because my concern is, I don't know what's going to happen to the demand for dedicated office space in the coming years. Um, so I just want to make sure that whatever incentives we are giving uh, go to whatever is going to be in demand. So for instance, Mississauga might have missed the opportunity with the dedicated office space to Toronto in the last 10 years. But what happens in the next 10 years? I just want to know if uh, whatever you come up with is scalable and flexible so that if the demand turns out to be more for work and live from home or whatever that type and that we can incent things like that as well. I just wanted your thoughts because we might create this program to incent more office space and I'm fully supportive of it. But what if the demand for that isn't there? Uh, you know, we would have created something, I would like to see something that's scalable and flexible. Um, three, three, Mr. Chairman. Uh, definitely, um, uh, all these aspects of of how the office market is responding to, to COVID is something that we're we're going to be monitoring for, for this program and, and and a variety of programs. As we as we know, uh, Peel being successful at attracting uh, its fair share of the office market in the GTA is, is is fundamental. And and there's there's lots of factors at play. Some have suggested even that um, you know with with COVID more work from home that it may be. Uh, more advantageous, more advantageous for for some employers to uh, 
to, to, to provide more satellite office opportunities for, for employees close, closer to home so that when they're working from home, they're not, you know, they're not traveling to necessarily having to travel to one centralized location all the time, every time they need to access uh, meeting space or, or collaboration. And that, that may in fact, you know, help, help drive um, so, some demand for, uh, in, in other areas of the 905 beyond just downtown Toronto. Um, also, you know, uh, social distancing and practices may, may be a little bit of a, um, you know, a, a counter a counter factor to to what's been happening in terms of um, uh, efforts to 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 put uh, you know more more folks in smaller spaces in offices and uh, and 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 having shared shared spaces and that that kind of thing. So, which may increase the demand for floor space. All of these things are are things that we'll need to uh, uh, to, to be monitoring. And and I think um, you know recognizing the broad spectrum of uh, of um, office opportunities that the regions and our local municipalities are are going to want to explore. Um, you know, uh, I, I think we're, we're, we'll be looking to develop a, a broad and flexible program that's not that, that that's not narrow. And I think one of the one of the um, I guess opportunities with with the Teague is that uh, because you're 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 perhaps um, incenting development that might not otherwise have occurred anyway. Um, you know, you 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 can be pretty aggressive and and, and flexible in in doing that. And um, that's our hope anyway. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. It's been moved by Mayor Crombie, seconded by Councillor Kovac. Madam Clerk, the vote to you. The motion moved by Mayor Crombie, seconded by Councillor Kovac, that a regional major office employment community improvement plan not be established based on the results of the feasibility assessment described in the joint report from the Interim Commissioner of Public Works and the Commissioner of Finance and Chief Financial Officer titled Feasibility Assessment of a Regional Major Office Employment Community Improvement Plan and further that the Region Appeal support local municipal major office employment community improvement plans by contributing tax incremental equivalent grants, and further that staff report back to Regional Council with detailed recommendations for establishing an office incentives program that uses tax incremental equivalent grants, including a framework and project criteria for enabling regional participation in local community improvement plans, and further that a copy of the subject report be forwarded to the local municipal councils. We'll call the vote. Councillor Carlson. Yes. Councillor Carlson in favour. Mayor Crombie. Yes. Mayor Crombie in favour. Councillor Demurla. Yes. Councillor Demurla in favour. Councillor Dasko. Yes. Councillor Dasko in favour. Councillor Dillon. Councillor Dillon. Councillor Downey. In favour. Councillor Downey in favour. Councillor Fonseca. In favour. Councillor Fonseca in favour. Councillor Fortini? Yes, in favour. Councillor Fortini in favour. Councillor Groves? Yes, in favour. Councillor Groves in favour. Councillor Innes? Yes, in favour. Councillor Innes in favour. Councillor Kovac? In favour. Councillor Kovac in favour. Councillor Mahoney? Yes. Councillor Mahoney in favour. Councillor McFadden? In favour. Councillor McFadden in favour. Councillor Medeiros? Councillor Medeiros? Councillor Pileschi? In favour. Councillor Pileschi in favour. Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Parrish in favour. Councillor Raz? Yes. Councillor Raz in favour. Councillor Sato? Yes. Councillor Sato in favour. Councillor Santos? Yes. Councillor Santos in favour. Councillor Sinclair? In favour. Councillor Sinclair in favour. Councillor Starr? Councillor Starr? Mayor Thompson? Favour. Mayor Thompson in favor. Councillor Vicente? Yes. Councillor Vicente in favor. Carries. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry, my apologies. This is uh, Councillor Maderos. I'd like to say yes as well. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Maderos. And with that, thanks to all. That concludes the presentation components. We're just on to what was held on consent and a couple of in cameras. So well done to all. Moving on then, item 14.1, letter dated July 6, 2020, providing a copy of a letter to the Minister of Municipal Affairs and Housing regarding a potential Minister zoning order for Mayfield West Phase 2, Stage 2, receipt recommended, and also related item 14.3. Councillor Parrish. Uh, yes, uh, Chair Unique. I have some concerns about this letter. I have been in touch with... Uh, the clerk to ask some questions. Uh, the uh, minister's order was signed July the 10th, as you can see from the other report. I would assume the decision would have may be made a couple of days before that. Our motion was passed June the 11th, and this letter is dated July 6th. When I spoke to Catherine, she said it was actually emailed July 3rd, which I find a bit odd. Not that I don't trust Catherine. I'm sure she's following it carefully, but 
I, I fail to understand with three full-time staff, uh, Chair Unica, how a motion would sit there for this long before it got sent to the minister. I am also a little concerned about the, uh, the original email or um, emailed version I saw of this. They've obviously put your name in electronically and it had a little oval around it, which looks very sloppy and very impersonal. Your communication to the minister usually is crossed out to say, Dear Steve, this one doesn't. And it usually is crossed out to say Nando, and this one doesn't. So this is a very poor representation of what went on at the council of June the 11th, where we had 16 people support the vote. I'm sure Councillor Santos and Fonseca will be concerned if their letter on active transportation takes a month to get anywhere. Um, I would like an explanation as to why this took so long. I would also like in future that when I move a motion, I'm going to suggest that it be done in 48 hours and the letter be given to or shown to the mover and the seconder before it's sent out so we can start tracking this. This is unacceptable. Um, Do you have any? I, yes, absolutely, Carolyn. First, I'm going to have the, the clerk speak to our practice with regards to it, then I'm going to try to fill it in accordingly. Madam Clerk. Uh, thank you. The Letters are typically written following the approval of the minutes of the meetings, which are at the subsequent meetings. So the minutes from the June 11th meeting were passed on June 25th. So the time frame is from June 25th to July 3rd. July 3rd, it was emailed out at uh, late in the day, about 4.30, before the chair's staff left for the weekend um, and didn't notice that it was actually dated for Monday. It wasn't sure that they would have it in time to have it sent out on Friday, but it was. So that's the difference between the 3rd and the 6th. And as for the uh, crossed out with the names, uh, that is correct. It is a, a typical um, added touch that the chair does put on letters. However, in the electronic world, it was, a, it was sent electronically. Um, there wasn't a pen to, to, to stroke it out and write in the name. So it was a, an electronic transfer. That's the mechanics uh, perspective of the, of the letter. And Carolyn, two other points. Two other points that I would add as well. Number one, Carolyn, I think I mentioned this to you at the Rope of Thirty Committee. Knowing that the letter had to be drafted, and I said the covering letter that they wanted from the chair, and I said you, to the staff, "You've heard the conversation, clerk. Write that strongly drafted letter." I knew that was going to take time. Um, that is why I also, and I think I mentioned this at committee. Following the council, or the very next day, I contacted the minister's office to advise him of what had happened at council. I didn't get him, but then he called back later that evening or the next day, but within 24 hours or 48 hours of the, to make him aware that these were the concerns that were expressed, the letter was to follow. And to answer your last piece, I didn't want them waiting for me to physically be here to sign the letter. I said, as soon as it's ready to go, give it the electronic signature and send it out right away. So, and your point is well made, because I too was concerned about the delays and having to approve the minutes. Uh, knowing that we're in a very fluid environment, that's why I took it upon myself to make the minister aware personally, and I'm going to say it was later that day, if at the latest the next morning, uh, to express the thoughts of this council. And then the, the signature is the reason that I gave. I didn't want them waiting for me to come into the office to sign it. As soon as it was ready to go, I said, staff, pound it out, please. Well, it's interesting that when we had our meeting earlier this week or last week, uh, your story was slightly different. You said you called him on his cell phone and got him in his car, which shows a, a closeness of association, which is admirable if it does us any good, but it didn't seem to in this case. Um, how would we, through you to the clerk, um, get these letters out faster so that we don't have to wait for approval, approval of a set of minutes? I think the motion was clear. I don't think those motions are ever challenged in a, in a minute, uh, a correction of minutes, and I think there has to be a way of getting these out within 48 hours. Um, Carolyn, clerk, before I have the clerk, just to clarify what you've said, and I, I, I'm sure I expressed it as such, my call to the minister's office was in the morning. It was he that called me back around 7 o'clock that evening. So that's when I got the call back from. I called in the morning. Again, if not the day before, the Thursday after the call, but I didn't get the minister either time. It was he that called me back based upon my call to his office. So to be very, very clear. And that's when he called me back at 7 o'clock, I would say, and I'm thinking it was the day after, but I hope that clarifies that. Madam Clerk, uh, and a fair point, Councillor Parrish, to expedite matters, what else can we do? Thank you, and through you, Mr. Chair. Uh, we can shift the process to, um, to, to prepare the letters 
before the minutes are approved. I would cautious though 48 hours depending on the content of the letter. If the letter is simply to um, enclose a copy of a motion or something like that, I th there's no problem with 48 hours of course. If the letter requires some more uh, detail and would involve staff in uh, providing some additional information, I'm thinking of Councillor Santos motion earlier today. Um, there will want to be the active transportation people will want to put some extra information in there to make it more impactful uh, when it's received at the other end as well as just in as opposed to just include enclosing a copy of the motion but certainly before the next council meeting well i thank you for that uh, through you chair to the clerk uh, when i look at this letter it's exactly the wording of the motion so there was no complexity involved at all so in future um, procedures will have a look at making this a formal change um, if we uh, when we meet again and secondly if i move a motion such as this again I will be asking for the exact wording. I'll, I'll have it drafted and I will ask council to approve it going in the form it's in and hopefully we can get it out within 48 hours. And thirdly, the dilemma of when the call was made to the minister will be solved. We've asked for a massive FOI, uh, Mississauga, for all his calls, all his lobbying, all his meeting with developers. It's quite an undertaking. Apparently it's gonna take several months, but I'm sure that date will come clear to us and I will share it with you, Nando, so you don't have any confusion in future. Thank you. Um, and Clerk, just one more point of clarification. Yeah, just for, for clarification uh, through you, Mr. Chair, Councillor Parrish, when a motion includes all of the phrasing that's required, then the, motion, the letter goes out immediately and it just literally says, in close, please find the motion. When the motion says for the chair to write a letter, that's a separate, that's a separate action that's the letter is not just necessarily the wording of the motion. So there are two ways to phrase a motion. One is for the chair to write a letter. The second way is to phrase the motion however you want the letter to read and say that it's forwarded to the people that you want it forwarded to from a from that perspective. So it's the difference between a cover letter and the and directing the chair to write a letter. So that's something that the committee can can look at when we're uh, having the discussions at our next meeting. Okay, and through you, Mr. Chair, I appreciate the clerk's response. Again, reading the letter, it's pretty straightforward. It was exactly the wording with one or two introductory paragraphs. In future, if it's important enough to me, I will give you uh, some direction on the introductory paragraphs if you require it. The reason I asked in the motion for you to send the letter was it carries more weight than just forwarding a motion that the minister is going to throw on a pile. Um, we all know from being in politics for a long time, I know particularly from being an MP, the people in the foreign offices used to say, when you send a form letter, we just throw it in the garbage. When you send a letter that's personalized and it's got your signature on it, we know you care about this case. And that's the way it's worked for a hundred years. So I asked for you to send the letter because it carried more weight. Um, I will alter the way I do motions in the future. And I thank you, Mr. Chair, and I thank you, Madam Clerk, for the explanations. I will be very careful next time. Uh, but Councillor Parrish, I don't want to get into a debate along the examples that you gave a personal call from me directly to the minister within 12 hours. Where would that fall in that hierarchy? Uh, Mr. Chair, I don't want to even ponder the fact that you wouldn't be telling the truth. That would be absolutely a horrible. Uh, you'd, you'd better be careful, Councillor Parrish, or I'm going to rule you out of order. I am being very careful. That's why I'm saying I would never even consider that. But we are not aware of your phone calls. The, the council, the 16 people that voted for this motion would not be aware of your phone call. I'm, I'm going to put the question to you again. In the hierarchy of taking it very, very seriously, for me to pick up the phone within hours of the incident to avert the minister, where would that fall in me taking the matter seriously and bringing it to his attention directly? It would be taking it very seriously. He obviously did not. Uh, and I'll leave it at that, and I appreciate your interpretation of that. Uh, more to follow. The, the second point, though, for committee, um, and to be candid with you, I followed up with several people, including the Integrity Commissioner. It is very poor form, I'll speak for myself, as members of council, and I was one for 30 years, I would never have dreamed, and never in 30 years, passed a motion as a councillor that I then said, Madam Mayor or a regional chair, can you write a letter saying what I really meant? Your motion means what it really meant. I confirmed with one other regional councillor, a regional chair, they can never confirm having done so and had the same question. If the councillor and a seconder have passed a motion, why do you need the chair's letter to say, hey, here's what they really meant. I could see someone like you, Councillor Parrish, ripping me a new one if I were to have the audacity to do that on any other 
matter. But that was something I referred to our integrity commissioner as well. I look forward to discussing that part of it as well at the Policies and Procedure Committee. Madam Clerk, do I need any other resolution or matter with that? Dealt with? Very good. Thank you very much. Moving on. Item Sorry, 14. Sorry, Mr. Chair. I'm on the, I'm on oh, the I, uh, board. I apologize. Councillor Pileshi, thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Just to clarify two items that I've I've heard. Um, one, and the fact that you, you made the phone call, and I don't really have too much of an issue with that as long as that phone call was you know, subject to, and you made it clear that it was subject to the minutes being ratified at council. And my second question, Mr. Chair, is that um, no one member of council can direct what the wording of a letter is without that council's approval, right? Like that, that, that discussion will happen during council for council's support. Is that correct? I can answer that because that was also infer confirmed by the integrity commissioner. And in fact, our solicitor as well, you can't direct somebody else as to a letter you wish to write and then ask them to write it. But again, that's something we can deal with at uh, the Procedures Committee as well. But your point's very well made. Um, and, and yes, to, to the first one, you're absolutely correct. It was out of a sense of urgency because I realized it was a very important motion. And that's why I attempted to get the minister's office attention to say this is coming because there's a rigmarole that we have to follow afterwards. But happy to have a more fulsome discussion when all the data is made available to the policies and procedures and discuss the entire issue. Um, yeah. Councilor, and I, I Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I, I realize that it is important to to some, um, and and it, we're comparing um, Councillor Santos's motion um, earlier, but that was that's a unanimous motion. Like I think that <clears throat> clearly states that you know that phone call would be warranted, or that letter um, uh, before the minutes may may be written uh, if it's not sent until after the minutes. I, I guess that's okay, but we're talking about two different things. One was unanimous support, um, and one wasn't. So I just wanted to confirm. And then, can you can you go back to Councillor Parrish made a comment that she would direct you to the proper wording of the letter. That direction would happen in council. That direction would not happen outside of council. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? I would agree, and I see the clerk agreeing as well. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, and more to follow on that uh, at committee, and I think that's appropriate. 14.2, uh, Laura Hall, Acting General Manager, Corporate Services, Acting Clown Kirk, Town of Caledon, a letter dated July 8, 2020, providing a copy of a Town of Caledon resolution regarding gypsy moth infestation. I, I don't recall who, don't we, we don't recall who asked for that. To, uh, Councillor Innes, was it I you that asked that? Please, the I floor is yours. Thank you. Um, I'm just, uh, I brought this forward at the town uh, and both at the TRCA, um, knowing that it's an issue that's affecting uh, Southern Ontario and knowing that if um, if the town does something and the, and the Conservation Authority doesn't do something and vice versa and the property owners are doing something, unless we have a collective approach, it's not, it's not going to work. Um, and we've seen what's what's happened with Emerald Ash Borer. So I'm just asking, and I know that CBC sort of heads the, um, the forestry group, but asking if the region can go back and have those discussions with with that group uh, and then report back to regional council at looking at taking a, an approach that all three municipalities and the region and the conservation authorities could work collaboratively on um, uh, with regards to this matter and perhaps you know future uh, invasive species as it's becoming more of a, a consistent problem um, throughout southern Ontario. So I, I just leave that and um, I think that that's staff's intentions. I don't think that I actually need a motion but I wanted to speak to it um, so that we can all work collaboratively to see what we could best do and, and also just bring to the attention of, of staff that um, while we're in the process of updating our MOUs with the conservation authorities, that items such as this and the Emerald Ash Borer should be part of those conversations as well. Thank you, appropriately so. And the clerk tells me that can simply be referred back to staff. Yes. Okay, uh, thank you. Mr. Chair, it's oh, uh, Councillor Raz. Go ahead. Sorry, just further to that, um, certainly we've been dealing with gypsy moth and canker worm infestations uh, over many years here in South of Mississauga. We uh, did some aerial spraying about approximately three years ago, and it was uh, moderately effective for certainly canker worms, but the gypsy moths are back in full force this year. Um, in terms of the uh, the approach, uh, City of Mississauga has taken an integrated pest management approach, which includes a lot of monitoring um, that could be treated of individual trees, uh, spring and worst case scenarios, but uh, also major piece is educating um, uh, the residents. Now, I don't think that Peel has that type of 
um, uh, person power to, to deal with this issue. So I'm happy to look at a more collaborative approach. But you were, in cases like this, you really need a boots on the ground to get the monitoring done to find out where those infestations are going to occur. And I know this particular year, uh, Although it's been bad in certain pockets down in the south of Mississauga, we've had uh, outbreaks in other areas of Mississauga that haven't experienced it before, and certainly Brampton and Caledon are seeing um, uh, increases as well. So it actually goes beyond Peel's borders. We try to uh, um, align our work along with uh, Toronto and neighboring Oakville, uh, but I think it needs to be broader than that. So if, if there's going to be an integrated approach, I'm happy to be part of any um, staff committee to, uh, to take a look at that it seems to be my second vocation bug management thank you thank you councillor fonseca thank you mr chair and just really briefly uh councillor in his uh the discuss when the discussion came forward at trca i had mentioned uh to put um just to councillor ross's uh collaborative approach i had mentioned to put trca staff in uh discussion or in contact with city of mississauga as to what we've done so I hope that that has occurred, and I think that that is at least a, an initial step in uh, moving forward on how we uh, how we can address this. I know in Ward Three, for example, um, the gypsy moth issue that I'm experiencing, to Council Ross's point, is uh, yeah there is an infestation this year. However, um, working through burlap traps, monitoring through the winter, uh, injections where necessary, but an education. Uh, an education with the residents um, is extremely important, along with um, where the where the uh, the gypsy the gypsy moss know no boundaries. They may be on a private uh, pri private property tree, a conservation authority public uh, property tree, or a city uh, property tree. So I think we do need to collaborate, and um, I hope that the, I hope the. Uh, connection between city of Mississauga and uh, TRCA has happened. And um, I'm happy. Uh, I, I don't have the same expertise as Councillor Rass, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm uh, happy to continue to work uh, with you as well on that. Thank you. Thank you all again, Madam Clerk. It's been referred on and we're good with that. Very good. Moving on. Items related to enterprise programs 15.3, the COVID-19 Economy Recovery Act, electronic participation in meetings and proxy voting. Councillor Sato. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for holding this. And um, I was really excited yesterday to hear from our lawyer at the city that um, I think it did receive royal assent um, just before the legislature closed. Um, as you know, I've been pushing for this for the last couple of years to um, give Mississauga equal opportunities that every other municipality in every region in the province had except us for the uh, for the proxy voting. Um, I just wanted some clarification from Catherine that um, th by approving this today, and I, I very happily will move the motion, um, by approving this today, we are also approving the, um, well, we're approving the process, but also what you have here is the amendment to the procedural bylaw to implement it, and that this would actually go in effect um, as of the next council meeting. Is that correct? And through to the clerk. Through you, Mr. Chair. Yes, that's in fact the case. The bylaw itself is even on this agenda. So once the bylaws right. is on uh, passed, then it is effective immediately. So for the next council wonderful. meeting, there will be both um, the ability to continue participation electronically and mm -hmm. as well as the proxy voting. I just draw your attention to the proxy voting. When there is a proxy vote, the person uh, is not counted for quorum, but their vote is recorded. So, for example, if you were the proxy for Councillor Parrish, then um, Councillor Parrish does not count for quorum, but you will uh, count for quorum and you would vote for yourself and for Councillor Parrish. Okay, so just a, a, another clarification then, and, and I don't think, I'm not looking forward to this ever happening, but um, if we have the triple majority issue, how does the proxy fit in there? Um, but I guess that's from the municipalities. That's not from exactly. regional councillors. Yeah, okay, exactly. sorry. I just answered my own question. Okay, thank you. On that. So anyway, again, I really want to thank you for bringing everything together today. Um, 
when uh, I, I had not seen the report because I was working off the old agenda uh, yesterday when we were in council. And um, when Councillor Parrish pointed it out, I wanted to make sure that we weren't delaying approving the bylaw, that we were doing everything today. So thank you. You know how important this was for, uh, for the city of Mississauga, for those of us on council. And I really want to thank um, our colleagues at Brampton and Caledon for supporting all of the motions that I brought forward over the last couple of years, um, asking the province to give us this uh, this authority. So um, I really appreciate it that you supported us in this. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Crombie. Can, oops. There, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. So does this work for the cities too, or just for the region? I guess it would, right? Yeah. Also, also, um, is our, do we pick one person or can we change that person each meeting? Say I was going to be away or I'm ill that day. I can call Councillor Sato, Councillor Parrish. Can you be my proxy that day? Send in a note to the clerk. Is that how it works? Or do you pick one person the entire term? We're just confirming, Madam Mayor, the clerk will respond. Thank you very much. With respect to your first question, is it uh, available to the cities? It's up to the individual municipalities to pass their own <coughs> procedure bylaws to permit it. Um, it's it, uh, And that's what we're doing today here at the region. With respect to appointing the proxy, it is different than appointing the alternates, which um, Brampton and Caledon are able to do. You can appoint a proxy per meeting. So you okay. don't appoint them for the team, or for the term rather, but it's per meeting. Got it. Okay, it can't, perfect. It can't so be happy. different proxies for different items on the agenda. It's one right. proxy per the whole meeting. So it can be different people for different items? Did you just say that too? No. no. That's, that's it's one no. person. That has, one person per meeting, not per, per item. Meeting. Correct. So they better be pretty in sync with the way you want to vote that day. <laughs> it is the obligation of the person who's been granted the proxy to, to vote that. in the Got way it. that the, the, the person would vote. Correct. Correct. Okay. I was happy to second Councillor Sato's move motion. Thank you. Which Thank makes you. it a true proxy. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Councillor Raz. Sorry, Mr. Chair, my hand's still up from previous. Uh, thank you. I need to vote. Councillor uh, Sato, at the, the risk of drawing your ire as well, but in the interest of full disclosure, you'll recall, and it was pre-COVID, I'm going back six months ago, we had a very good and somewhat heated debate around this council table that you generated on why this was the right thing to do. And on that instance, we passed the motion. Um, as I say, I don't know if I'm going to draw your ire. That was another instance six months ago or so where I called the minister and let him know personally. This is a big issue to us. Uh, my apologies to my Caledon and Brampton colleagues today. You may think I was sticking up for Mississauga, but as I said at the time, it was the right thing to do. And what the minister said, Chair, if you can get your three municipalities to agree, I will not be a problem. So I commend you for passing on our thanks to our council colleagues. And I have to thank the minister for being true to his word and saying, if we could come to a consensus here, it will be passed on. And you can judge me as well if I did a little bit more work than I should have on that file. Councillor Sato. Sure. Mr. Mr. Chair, I appreciate you doing that because it was very important to us. And uh, I think any time that you can use any influence to uh, to do what get what regional council is supporting. I certainly always appreciate that. Thank you. That means a lot to me. Thank you very much, Councillor Sato. Well done to all on that. Madam Clerk, over to you. Thank you. Motion moved by Councillor Sato, seconded by Mayor Crombie, that upon Bill 197 receiving royal assent, which it has, amendments to the Region of Peel Procedure Bylaw 56-2019 Attached is append Appendix 1 to the report of the Interim Commissioner of Corporate Services titled the COVID-19 Economic Recovery Act 2020, Electronic Participation in Meetings and Proxy Voting, be approved. And further, that the process for appointing a proxy member attached is Appendix 2 to the subject report be approved. And further, that a bylaw to amend the Region of Peel Procedure Bylaw regarding electronic participation at meetings and proxy voting be presented for enactment. We'll call the vote now. Mayor Brown. Mayor Brown? Mayor Brown's never there. Mayor Brown? Councillor Carlson? Yes. Councillor Carlson in favor. Mayor Crombie? Yes. Mayor Crombie in favor. Councillor DeMurla? Yes. Councillor DeMurla in favor. Councillor Dasko? Yes. Councillor Dasko in favor. Councillor Dillon? Councillor Dillon? Councillor Downey? 
In favor. Councillor Downey in favor. Councillor Fonseca? Yes, in favor. Councillor Fonseca in favor. Councillor Fortini? In favor. Councillor Fortini in favor. Councillor Groves? In favor. Councillor Groves in favor. Councillor Innes? Yes, in favor. Councillor Innes in favor. Councillor Kovac? In favor. Councillor Kovac in favor. Councillor Mahoney? Councillor Mahoney? Councillor McFadden? Councillor McFadden? Councillor Medeiros? Councillor Medeiros? Councillor Pileshi? Yes, and Councillor Mahoney just said he got booted out. He votes in favor. We'll, we'll take yours and we'll wait for Councillor Mahoney to confirm. Thank you. Councillor Pileshi in favor. Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Parrish in yes. favor. Councillor Raz? Yes. Councillor Raz in favor. Is that you, Councillor Mahoney? Councillor Mahoney in favor. Councillor yes, Sato? Thank you. Sorry, I froze there. That's okay. Thank you. Yes. Councillor Sato? Yes. Yes. Councillor Sato in favor. Councillor Santos? Yes. Councillor Santos in favor. Councillor Sinclair? In favor. Councillor Sinclair in favor. Councillor Starr? Councillor Starr? Mayor Thompson? In favor. Mayor Thompson in favor. Councillor Vicente? Yes, thanks. Councillor uh, Vicente in uh, favor. Carries. Thank you. Thank you all. That brings us down to 21.3, the additional item that we put on at the beginning of the meeting, the press release, which I hope has been conveyed to you by now. And perhaps I'll go to Councillor Demerla. Councillor Demerla, you're satisfied with the press release as presented? Um, thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, I am. Uh, and I just wanted to just give some context that uh, uh, earlier today, um, I think some questions were raised as to why it was delayed. It's uh, something that uh, I've been working with staff for some time to get to this uh, press release. And I think originally it was going to go at a different time, but uh, staff thought that given that today is a regional council meeting, that they tried to rush it to get it out for today, to link it to today's meeting. And so I just wanted to say maybe that that's the reason they couldn't get it out to everybody, including me, uh, ahead of time. So I do want to thank staff for working extra hard to get it out early enough for today. But, uh, uh, you know, I wish it had gone out two weeks ago, but it couldn't for different reasons. So I'm, I'm quite pleased with it. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Sato. Yes, yeah, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I was, I just went into my email to open up the additional stuff and my assistant has moved it out of my inbox. I can't find it. So I'm trying to go by memory. Um, my, my only concern with the press release is that I believe it, um, it, it is basically ignoring all of the hard work that the, um, uh, that the Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee has done over the last 18 months kind of relegates it to, you know, a little additional at the end of the press release. And all of the work that is in this press release, all of the statements have been worked on by the Community Safety and Wellbeing Committee. And, you know, the recommendations have come to council, um, not the recommendations, sorry, the updates have come to council. One as recently as a couple of weeks ago. We discussed it when the chief was here and uh, both Nancy and the chief are chairing that committee. And I think you would agree that, um, you know, it's been a tremendous amount of work done. And, you know, to, to put it as I think it was, and, I, and I'm sorry, I don't have it in front of me anymore, but, um, you know, I believe there was one little mention of that committee in this press release. And quite frankly, I think that's unacceptable. Um, you know, I, I, the motion supports, basically the motion that we dealt with two weeks ago supports the work that, that we have been doing on that committee. And I think it's a little bit of an insult to the committee and all of the members, not, not, not those of us that are on council, but all of the community members and stakeholders who have spent hours and hours working on it and then a press release goes out um, that, you know, council passed this press release and it's almost like the committee is being ignored. And I really think that's extremely unfair. Um, it's, 
you know, I don't have a problem when a motion goes forward of, of uh, council sending out press releases. And I guess we need to, um, we, we need to uh, maybe establish some uh, stronger protocol on that through the procedures committee. But, um, you know, Councillor Downey, I was pleased to see that you were quoted on it because you do sit on the, um, you do sit on the committee with us. Um, but, you know, Councillor Pelleshi and I didn't know anything about it. And we sit on the committee. At least I assume Councillor Pelleshi didn't know anything about it. Um, so I, I want to raise that as a concern. And I, I, I feel bad for the members of the committee, for Nancy and the chief and the former chief who started out with uh, the former acting chief who started out on the committee and all of the people that we have been dealing with, we've been working with in long meetings I mean, the number of meetings we had one last week was what, two and a half hours um, online and just all these regular meetings and all that work is being done. And I, I just feel like it has been totally ignored in this press release. And I think that's very unfair. Thank you, Councillor Downey. Uh, thank you. Through you, Chair, um, I, uh, I sympathize with um, Councillor Sato's remarks and, and agree to a point. I think, um, you know, uh, Councillor DeMerle and I had chatted about uh, a potential press release at the time of the motion um, going out, um, but wasn't something I was um, uh, familiar with in terms of practice at the region. Um, but what I will say is that in our meeting last week, as Councillor Sato mentioned, we had a lengthy discussion about uh, community rollouts and community uh, communications. And oftentimes at the region, we are not we are not the best at tooting our own horns. We are not the best at communicating the work that is being done. Um, there are a number of um, initiatives that spin off from community safety and well-being. There are, as Councillor Sato mentioned, a, a arm's length list of agencies that sit around those tables um, and that are doing the work. Um, and I think that moving forward, um, you know, I will support, uh, I will support uh, the press release moving, um, potentially with some tweaks if Councillor Sato would like to see that happen. Um, but I think that moving forward, we really need to take a hard look at the way that we communicate the work that we do in the community. Ultimately, um, you know, we, we, I'm sure all of my colleagues can attest, our inbox have been flooded over the last month in regards to defunding the police, um, yet uh, you know, the calls for action are, are items and action items that we are already working on, things that we are already doing, discussions we are already having, um, initiatives that are, are, are moving. The train is moving in full force. So I think that um, we ultimately need to do a much better job at communicating those things uh, with a robust communication strategy coming out of community safety and well-being. People need to know that we have strong relationships. People need to know that our, our acting CAO and our chief of police uh, chair this committee together. They need to know that their council members are sitting around the table and that their service providers are also sitting around the table. They need to know that we're all in this together, our school boards, um, all service agencies, United Way, everybody's sitting there and we're having these conversations. And I would encourage my fellow council members to um, log on to those meetings if you have the opportunity to. Uh, the conversations are good, the information is good, uh, and we are moving forward. We are, we are moving the dial. These things are happening. Um, so it's one thing for the community to come out in full force surrounding a particular issue. Um, but because we haven't communicated that we're already doing the work, um, it seems as though uh, we're not doing anything when in fact we know the work is being done. So I think that um, really the, the impetus is on us to move forward with a robust communication plan. Um, and, and maybe this press release is, is a precursor to that. Um, so I think that if, if Councillor Sato would like to see some changes to the press release, then maybe that's something that we can work on offline or, or I guess at this moment in terms of an amendment. But um, ultimately, I think that uh, as per our conversation within community safety and well-being, um, a robust communication strategy outlining why we're doing what we're doing, um, how we're doing what we're doing, how we are engaging the community, and what that means for the community is ultimately um, where we should be. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Pelleshi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and <clears throat> I'll echo the, uh, the words of both my committee colleagues that are uh, sitting on the committee with me. And it's, um, Councillor Sato, you're you're absolutely right with everything you said. And Councillor Downey, um, we we know that we don't we don't toot our own horns um, often enough. And maybe this is that perfect opportunity to 
to open it up and, and to have that discussion on on what the communication looks like um, ongoing. I certainly don't need to be quoted in a press release, and I'm sure Councillor Sato doesn't doesn't need to be either. You as chair, Councillor Downey, I fully support your quote in the in the press release. But it's all those other stakeholders that, um, like Councillor Councillor Sato has said, what about them? What about those discussions? Maybe we should be having press releases after each phase that we're going through with the with the well-being plan. Like maybe that's the discussion that we should be having. So if anything, this coming for, before us today is, is a good opportunity to have those discussions. I don't think that this needs to be uh, supported or I, and I don't believe that, I, that we should support this going forward, but I think that this is the perfect opportunity to open up that door. And I, and I thank Councillor DeMerla for doing that to ensure that we do get that communication out. And like I said, um, maybe to our CAO, um, looking and, and asking asking you what what does that look like? Do we do we talk about you know after each meeting? Do we do we do we go back and say this is where we started and and do press releases all the way along? Because ultimately we want to get the word out. We want knowledge to be out there. We want people to be educated about the things that we are doing to encourage them to to support and to to get involved. So I look I look to you, Nancy, if you can just shed some light on that. Through the chair, can everyone yes. hear me? Yes, okay. Nancy, go ahead, please. Perfect. Thank you so much for the question and more so for the conversation around community safety and well-being. Without a doubt, there is a, and I'm going to quote uh, you, Councillor Downey, there is a robust communication strategy underway in development. Unfortunately, we had such a great conversation last week. We weren't able to start this conversation because as the as councillors have said, this table belongs to over 30 organizations. So there is a robust um, plan underway. It includes three tenants. The first is looking at the development of a website or a web page on, on the regional website. The second is creating our, and I say our being the community safety and well-being table, our stories and pushing those out to the media. And the third is through digital. So the goal is to really control the story or, or, or provide our story out to the, to the community. And where community safety and well-being table is the foundation based on the conversations that are being had or the situations underway, we would then highlight those. So for instance, mental health may be one that the community safety and well-being table would like to highlight. When we get into family violence and we push out that campaign in the fall, that will be another one that we will push out um, within these three different ways. So without a doubt, that is on its way. We will see the first iterations in August, and that information will flow through the community safety and well-being table. So thank you very much, and I think that's exactly where we were we're we're trying to go. And I know councillors, and I'm I'm one of them that just wants things to happen yesterday rather than tomorrow. But unfortunately, we we need to have those discussions, and we need to you know we we're ensured that you know staff that are a lot smarter than us are are putting everything together so we can we can look at it and we can support it. So I think that that we should still we should. Uh, stay the course and continue with everything that's uh, that we are doing at the table and 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 with the engagement and um, maybe request that this media release <clears throat> not get put forward today. Um, I know typically like media releases, um, we like to do it at the start of something um, that's that's fresh to get it out there and and that's what I can get behind and and I can I can support. But um, I I don't like to. Um, to bring things um, out that or shed light on something that we've been doing for so long, especially when there's already a, a fulsome engagement underway. And uh, I just request that of members of council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Councillor DeMerla. Thank you, Chair. Um, you know, I'm happy if uh, we want to add some language to the press release that speaks to the work that, uh, uh, you know, the committee has been doing, but I would hate to lose the opportunity to actually shine a light on what the region of Peel is doing, which is it's showing leadership. Uh, you know, we're among the first councils to actually pass a motion that has some teeth that says we'll increase the number of M certs and, you know, asking the and, you know, saying that we want to give um, the social health workers the same standing as police officers as one, you know, because if you're serious about uh, de-policing, um, 
mental health crisis. You know, we need to do that. If we put that in a motion, and that does not in any way take away from what the work the committee is doing. And I do want to say one thing, which is that I know I'm not on that committee, but this is an issue that I've been uh, advocating for for a long time. It's something that I'm very passionate about, and, uh, and I can only hope that the only, that it isn't such that if you're not on the committee, you can't advocate for something or bring a motion forward, because it is something that's close to my heart. I might not be on that committee. Maybe there'll be uh, some opportunity down the road for me to be on that committee, or perhaps you know I can look into after today to see if there's a way for me to get on that committee now, or I have to wait till uh, some other time. But you know, I I, I just want to make sure that what to me what this is about is there's a conversation out there, there's a public that's interested in this issue, and as a region we actually pass something uh, that has some teeth. So why would we to uh, you know I think uh, Councillor um, Joanna Downey's book, the fact that we don't always toot our horns, well as a region we should be tooting our horns we passed this and if you know i'm happy if uh, you know we want uh, all members on that committee to quote that's fine if uh, councillor sato wants to wants a quote in or councillor palashi by all means you know you've been doing a lot of hard work and we can also get some quotes from perhaps community stakeholders as well as chief nish i mean i'm happy with that this was something that staff presented to me today and timelines were short and i was fine with that but i don't want uh, you know what's the word perfect to come in the way of good this is an opportunity for us to shine a light on what we are doing. I don't see a downside to doing this press release. Uh, we can certainly beef up the press release and talk about uh, some of the ongoing work that's been done, but it would be a shame to not do the press release. Uh, that would be my uh, that would be my thoughts, uh, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Sato. I still see you on my list. You're next. Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you for letting me back on. Um, so I'm I'm going to suggest that you know I know I I never see a a downside to as Councillor Downey said to promoting the work that we're doing at the region and uh, Councillor Demerla this has nothing to do with me wanting a quote in a press release I if I want a quote I'll do my own press release on on motions that I bring forward um, but it, it has to do with the fact that you know we we have passed similar motions in the past on this and we have discussed it at the committee. Um, this motion is basically um, council supporting one more part of what the committee is working on. And I think that should be the approach in the press release that, um, you know, that, that uh, a motion was passed at council on whatever date um, that supports the work that the, um, that the Peel uh, Safety and Wellbeing Committee has been working on for the past 18 months. And, um, you know, I, I mean, even one of the quotes was saying that the, um, uh, where is it? Peel intends to lead change. Well, you know, I'm sorry, but we've been leading change for 18 months. We don't intend to do it. We are doing it. And, and we're well on our way with the committee. So I, I would just like to see this as, as an endorsement, as a support for the work that the committee is doing. And, um, and, and I personally, I think it would be good to have a quote from the chief. And, you know, usually, um, uh, you know, you, you would have, I don't always agree with, uh, with the quotes only coming from staff, the CAO or whatever, but, um, but I, I think, and I think it's appropriate that the chair of the, uh, the health committee is, is quoted and the mover, but um, I, I just think the approach of the press release is backwards. So tagging on, the committee work, which is the key work that the region of Peel is doing, and it includes all of this, tagging tagging it on at the end, I think goes backwards. I think the press release really needs to say this was done to support the work and add to the work or whatever, right up front at the top of the press release, and and then mention that you know the committee has been will be bringing their final report in the fall. So that's my suggestion, Mr. Chair, and. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not sure what you're looking for today. I know we added it to the agenda. I think it should go back to staff to uh, to take a look at it. I think the comments, Nancy, you've heard the comments from uh, at least four of us, three of us that sit on the committee, Councillor DeMurla as the mover. Um, may, maybe take that and ask communication staff to rework it a little bit. Councillor Sato, thank you. I think the clerk's telling me that that amounts to a referral. Um, and I will take that accordingly at the time, but I do want to give one last opportunity for the speakers. Councillor Pileshi, then Downey. Councillor Pileshi. 
Thank you, Mr. Chair. And I think that's if, if that's what we're talking about now, that's something that I can get behind and, and we can, you know, reach out to the committee, the members, the stakeholders to ensure that, you know, they they're provided with the opportunity to to comment. You know, we don't have enough it's it's gonna be a really long press release if we allow all the members to to provide a, a quote. So so maybe just an opportunity for for the mentioning of each organization that uh, that is uh, that is included in this. And I would I would support and, and can get behind a, a referral back to staff to, to to take into consideration what the members have been uh, um, been requesting here and have that come back. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank, thank you, Councillor Downey. Councillor Downey, I can't hear you. My apologies. My apologies. Um, through you, Chair, I'm wondering if there's a way to um, work on that wording offline. Um, with the members of uh, community safety and well-being in the, the essence of time um, and, and have the release go out um, as quickly as possible um, for Councillor DeMerla. Thank you. And do we, do we actually need to refer it or can we just take that direction to make the changes and move it through? Thank you. And it's a fair question. I'm going to ask Councillor DeMerla to speak last and I'm going to refer it to the clerk to see what's the best way to proceed. Councillor DeMerla. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my thinking was along the lines of uh, Councillor Downey. I just don't want this referral then to get bogged down to the point that it's, you know, we're sending the press release 10 days later. It's already been delayed. And one of the reasons it was delayed was, uh, quite rightly, the CA wanted to make sure that uh, Chief Nish and everybody was on site. So we did do some of that spade work in terms of uh, making sure the stakeholders were on site with the press release before we sent it. And that's the reason it actually got delayed. Happy to have a couple more quotes and uh, more language around work that's already been done and some wordsmithing that suggests that not will lead, but has been leading. Um, but I really would hate to lose the momentum. We've already lost some. Uh, sorry about that. I'm sorry about that. Uh, to lose some momentum. It's, it's a press release. It just It's fairly straightforward. I'd like to still see it go out this week as early as possible. So I like Councillor Downey's suggestion if Councillor Sato and Councillor Palacio are okay with that. Thank you. Ma Madam, Madam Clerk, over to you. How best to proceed? Thank you. We could take it as direction back to staff to rework the uh, press release in accordance with the comments that were made and to send out the press release upon the approval of, and that's the question, the approval of Councillors Downey, DeMerla, and Sato. If I, if I may, could, could you just... Councillor Pileshi as well is on the committee. And, and Councillor Pileshi, then with the approval of the, the uh, sign-off of the four councillors, the press release modified in accordance with the comments that were made during uh, the meeting, then the press release could be sent. I'm seeing Councillor okay, Sato shake her head yes. Could I ask if it's okay if we just give direction and let staff do their magic and send it out? That is, if that's council's will, that it can be sent out with the um, staff's input without further input from from council. That, if that's council's will. Not hearing any objections, then staff will take the comments back. Councillor Pileshi would like to speak to that. Councillor Pileshi, Councillor Pileshi, um, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and I'm fine with that as long as they've taken into account what uh, members have said here today and. Um, I'm 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 not sure about the whole um, this being a rush though. It, why why is why is it a rush? Can somebody explain that to me? I I could I mean you know, Councillor Palacio, it's just in the interest of time. We pa we passed this motion two weeks ago, and usually if we were to do a press release, we would have done it that day or that week. It was held up so that we could you know consult with stakeholders, make sure that. Uh, uh, the CAO had a chance to speak with Chief Nish, and so it got delayed. It's it's just a matter of you do something, uh, you try and get the press release out as soon as possible, right? So I just don't want it to uh, get into August, and we're we are all gone, and this is our last, hopefully this is our last regional council meeting. So I, I just thought that, you know, if everyone's okay, we've given our input. Uh, I'm very supportive of everything that you and Councillor Seda have said, and then we just trust staff to incorporate that and let it go. And, and so... 
Sorry, Michael, um, go ahead, please. Yeah, sorry, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, and and typically, I would I would I, I would agree with you 100 percent when we when we do something and we're 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 doing it. We the motion is 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 put forward, but this is something we've been doing for so long. So that's why I just and I know that you know currently we're working on the on a plan um, to get more of the engagement piece out there. So I I think that you're absolutely right when when the regional council is is, is doing things and and. Um, we've moved a motion that is uh, that's great for everybody. We want everybody to know a press release is, is should be out there as soon as possible. It's just this a little bit different because we've been working on it for for eighteen months now. So um, I don't I just don't want to say to staff, okay, you have two days to or no, typically actually you have a one day to do it. Like that's not what I want to say. I want a good press release to. Uh, to be put forward, um, and I'm happy with uh, um, with Nancy's nod to say we've heard you, we we understand, but but a one day timeline is not what I'm looking for. Um, you know, you tell us what how much time you need to put something together, and I can support that. Thank and, you, and Mr. Counselor, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Pelleshi. You're taking me where I, I hope we're going to end up. Um, and in fairness, um, CEO Acting CEO Pelleshi. Uh, Paul Zanelli and others have been working on it. So a lot of good work's gone into it. I really like the idea of referring it to our acting CAO who can touch base with the three members of our committee and Councillor DeMerla. And I think between an email or two to fine tune the working copy we have here, I would hope that in a couple of days or so, sooner rather than later, Nancy has the direction with the concurrence of the three members of the committee and Councillor DeMerla that you can arrive at something. Because I, I must say, in just having read it um, earlier, the, I think what we've got is pretty close. It needs a little tweaking, but I don't think it's far off. And in the interest of moving forward, um, is it acceptable then at the suggestion of the chair that we refer it to Nancy Acting CAO with the three members of the Community Safety and Wellness Committee along with Tipica in the, the hopes I think she everybody understands the flavor of where we're going and in the next 48, 72 hours it will have been dealt with. Does that have it as direction? Anybody wish to speak to that suggestion on the part of the chair? If not, Madam Clerk, can I take that as direction? Okay, thank you all very much. Moving on. That brings me to, I have notices of motion. The first one, 22.1 uh, uh, from Councillor Parrish. Uh, the resolution 2020-57 regarding Appeal 2041 Regional Official Plan Review and Municipal Comprehension. I know we've touched upon, and Councillor Parrish, you, you asked for the, to be withdrawn earlier? Yep. Very good. Thank you very much. Moving on, Madam Clerk, to you, the bylaws before we go in camera. Thank you. Uh, moved by Councillor Sato, seconded by Sarah Thompson. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Sorry. Councillor um, Seed. Yeah, I, I guess because my name and Councillor Raz's name is on this motion. Oh, okay. Uh, we should be the one. We should be the ones to remove it. <laughs> oh, okay. So going back to twenty two point one. Yep. Uh, Councillor Raz, you're good with that. Yes, Mr. Chair. Okay. All right. Very good. <laughs> thank you, uh, and, and for all of you for keeping us moving on. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Back to you with regards to the bylaws. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Sato, seconded by Mayor Thompson, that the bylaws listed for the July 23rd, 2020 Regional Council agenda, being bylaws 54 2020 and 55 2020, be given the required number of readings, taking as read, signed by the Regional Chair and the Regional Clerk, and the corporate seal be affixed there too. Are there any objections? Seeing none, carries. Thank you. Madam Clerk, that brings me then in camera and over to you to properly convene us in camera. Thank you. We are moving into closed session. You do not have a video option during in-camera. The screen is locked with the closed session logo. As per the rules of electronic participation, each of you must declare that you will adhere to the confidentiality standards as outlined in the Regional Council Code of Conduct, which provides, when making decisions, the Regional Chair and Members of Council will have access to information that may be confidential or contentious. The Regional Chair and Members of Council will respect and maintain the confidentiality of information communicated to them in confidence by staff or colleagues. The Regional Chair and Members of Council will not disclose a document or information contained within a document provided for use in connection with a closed in-camera meeting of Regional Council. The Regional Chair and Members of Council will not disclose the deliberations of a closed session without the prior permission of Council. If you cannot make the stated declaration or appropriate arrangements so that any other person cannot see or hear any of the confidential deliberations taking place, please withdraw from the meeting until we have moved back into open session. Members who leave the meeting during the in-camera session and attempt to come back via the dial-in option will be required to send an email to council at peelregion.ca indicating their request to rejoin the meeting. You will, we will temporarily pause the in-camera session, unlock the room to allow you to join. You will be required to identify yourself when joining the meeting. 
With that, we need a motion to move in camera. I see Councillor Pileschi seconded by Councillor Raz. You need a formal vote, Madam Clerk? That's taken as everybody in agreement. And with that, we are moving into camera. Can you just give us a second to move back out. Oh, so Madam Clerk, we're back to 25 bylaws. First matter that you that the in list five list national council agenda be approved. That's the first one. Mayor Brown. Yes. Mayor Brown in favor. Mayor Crombie. Yes. Mayor Crombie in favor. Councillor Demurla. Yes. Councillor Demurla in favor. Councillor Dasko. Yes. Councillor Dasko in favor. Councillor Dillon. Councillor Dillon. Councillor Downey. In favor. Councillor Downey in favor. Councillor Fonseca. Yes. Councillor Fonseca in favor. Councillor Fortini? Yes. Councillor Fortini in favor. Councillor Groves? Yes. Councillor Groves in favor. Councillor Innes? My apologies, Catherine. Can you just um, repeat what we're voting on? Because my camera cut out at this, uh, when you mentioned it. Of course. That the uh, in camera item rep report listed as item 24.6 be received, and that the in camera direction related to item 24.5 listed on the July 23rd, 2020 Regional Council agenda be approved. So this is the first matter that was dealt with in camera. Thank you, the answer is no. Councillor Innes opposed. Councillor Kovac? Yes. Councillor Kovac in favor. Councillor Mahoney? Yes. Councillor Mahoney in favor. Councillor McFadden? Councillor McFadden has indicated she is absent. Councillor Medeiros? Councillor Medeiros? Yes. yes. Councillor Medeiros in favor. Councillor Pileschi? Councillor Pileschi is absent from the meeting. He just provided notice. Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Parrish in favor. Councillor Raz? Yes. Councillor Raz in favor. Councillor Sato? Yes. Councillor Sato in favor. Councillor Santos? Yes. Councillor Santos in favor. Councillor Sinclair? In favor. Councillor Sinclair in favor. Councillor Starr? Councillor Starr? Mayor Thompson? No. Councillor, or Mayor Thompson opposed. Councillor Vicente? Yes. Councillor Vicente in favor. Thank oh, you. That carries. The, yes, but the second motion, the second motion is that the recommendations contained within the confidential report relating to item 24.7 listed on the July 23rd, 2020 Regional Council agenda be approved and become public upon adoption. That is the second matter that we dealt with in camera. Mayor Brown? Yes. Mayor Brown in favor. Councillor Councillor Carlson is absent. Mayor Crombie? Sorry, um, I, is that the second matter with respect to... Um, bargaining. Bargaining, yes. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Mayor Crombie in favor. Councillor DeMurla? Yes. Councillor Demurla in favor. Councillor Dasko? Councillor Dasko? Councillor Dillon? Councillor Dillon? Councillor Downey? In favor. Councillor Downey in favor. Councillor Fonseca? Yes. Councillor Fonseca in favor. Councillor Fortini? Yes. Councillor Fortini in favor. Councillor Groves? Yes. Councillor Groves in favor. Councillor Innes? Yes. Councillor Innes in favor. Councillor Kovac? Yes. Councillor Kovac in favor. Councillor Mahoney? Yes. Councillor Mahoney in favor. Councillor McFadden? Oh, she's absent. Councillor Medeiros? Yes. Councillor Medeiros in favor. Councillor Pleshi is absent. Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Parrish in favor. Councillor Raz? Yes. Councillor Raz in favor. Councillor Sato? Yes. Councillor Sato in favor. Councillor Santos? Yes. Councillor Santos in favor. Councillor Sinclair? In favor. Councillor Sinclair in favor. 
Councillor Starr? Councillor Starr? Mayor Thompson? Favour. Mayor Thompson in favour. Councillor Facente? Yes. Councillor Facente in favour. Okay. Thank you. And now with that, I, I have the... I missed the vote. It's Councillor Dasko. I'm in favour. Thank you. A acknowledged, Steve. Thank you. Um, with that, I now have the great pleasure, thanks to all of you that sort of did two days' work today, and to the staff that got all the reports to us on a timely basis, to call for a motion that says we no longer need the August Regional Council meeting. So if I could have Councillor Raz move that, seconded by Councillor Sato. Madam Clerk, do you need a vote or just the nays? Over to you for the vote. Thank you. That a motion moved by Councillor Raz, seconded by Councillor Sato, that the Regional Council meeting scheduled for August 6, 2020 be cancelled. Mayor Brown? Yes, although I still want to see everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we, we can't see you, you anyway. <laughs> you need to go to the car. That's what we see you. Mayor Crombie. <laughs> You'll see me. I'll see you in a few minutes, in fact. Yes, yes. Great to have be in favor. Thank you. Councillor DeMurla? Yes. Councillor DeMurla in favor. Councillor Dasko? Yes. Councillor Dasko in favor. Councillor Dillon? Councillor Dillon? Councillor Downey? In favor. Councillor Downey in favor. Councillor Fonseca? Yes. Councillor Fonseca in favor. Councillor Fortini? Yes. Councillor Fortini in favor. Councillor Groves? Yes. Councillor Groves in favor. Councillor Innes? Yes. Councillor Innes in favor. Councillor Kovac? Yeah, in favor. Councillor Kovac in favor. Councillor Mahoney? Yes. Councillor Mahoney in favor. Councillor Medeiros? Yes. Councillor Medeiros in favor. Councillor Parrish? Yes. Councillor Parrish in favor. Councillor Raz? Uh, yes, and don't tell Councillor Dillon so he actually shows up for the August meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Thank and you. star, too, and star. <laughs> Councillor Seda? I like her idea. Can we make it part of the motion? <laughs> uh, yes. Uh, Councillor Seda, in favor. Council have the minutes come out after. <laughs> <laughs> Councillor Santos? Yes, for sure. Councillor, Councillor Santos, in favor. Councillor Sinclair? In favor. Councillor Sinclair, in favor. Councillor Starr? Councillor Starr? Mayor Thompson? In favor. Mayor Thompson in favor. Councillor Vicente? Yes. Councillor Vicente in favor carries. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I want to hasten to add, by the way, because I had to correct somebody today, that doesn't mean any of us are going into summer recess because you all know the work of the regional and local councillor and mayor means that Mayor Crombie knows and Mayor Brown, we have a police board meeting in August. We have our AMO meetings in August. That's a four-day event. We have COVID meetings that the mayors and I will be continuing to attend. And I know you still have your committee work that you sit on. So uh, just a little bit slower agenda, but we're still very busy people because municipal work always has to get done. So allow me that commercial message. With that, Madam Clerk, I've got a resolution with regards to the bylaws at the Bylaw 56 2020 to confirm the proceedings of Regional Council at its meeting held on July 23rd, 2020 and to authorize the execution of documents in accordance with the Regional Appeal Bylaws relating thereto be given the required number of readings taken as read, signed by the Regional Chair and the Regional Clerk and the corporate seal affixed thereto as moved by Mayor Brown and seconded by Mayor Crombie. Are there any opposed? Seeing none, that is carried. A motion to adjourn from Councillors Mahoney and Kovac. We stand adjourned. Thank you very much to all.